What's up y'all, Reggie here. Another video for The Utopian Project. And um, just, you know, especially over the past few days, I was like, oh, I need to do another video just to kind of talk about these things because <clears throat> logical fallacy, you know, one of my favorite subjects. Because when you start understanding these things, you start to kind of take the lid off of your own understanding and misunderstanding of yourself, of life, in general. And you start to have epiphanies, you start to realize, you start to learn more. So it's just, I just think it's just such an important topic for people to get into and understand. But, you know, I started realizing like, how important it is to understand the fallacies of false choice and or slash false dilemma um, and also the fallacy of composition which can go by other names lately for me I've been using a lot of the term poisoning the well and um, sometimes it's not really used in a poisoning of the well kind of scenario but um, when it comes to people a lot of times it is uh, it is poisoning the well and guilty by association sort of thing um, but, you know, it's just, I just want to reiterate. So, you know, false choice, false dilemma is when you present or you make an argument that either two, and this is also called black and white, when it's, when it's only two choices as a solution or as a, as an explanation, um, when there's only two choices, and they're usually opposite or somewhat opposite, but it doesn't matter. When there's two choices, a lot of times it's called black and white because they're usually opposite. But, um, and it plays, the law of opposites is so natural that doing such helps helps facilitate and it greases the skids for the fallacy to sound logical because so many things in life are a choice between opposites because generally that's, that is life. So, Every second of your life, you're either going to do something or not. I'm going to press the gas pedal or I'm not. I'm going to steer left or I'm not. I'm going to steer right or I'm not. Uh, everything is kind of come comes down to these binary choices between opposites. So black and white is oftentimes easy for people to get caught up in the black and white fallacy. Uh, but the fallacy of composition, et cetera, is, I mean, the fallacy of a false choice, a false dilemma is when you present only two or whatever, you present a limited amount of solutions or explanations to a problem or scenario when in fact there are more. So when you only present these two solutions or these three or four or five or 10 or whatever, when and this is very common in politics, um, but when you only present these these solutions and there are more then you've created a dilemma and the dilemma is 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 false because there's more solutions than may seem apparent because of the way you are describing something or the way the media is reporting something lying by omission <clears throat> and leaving out information may, almost always presents a false dilemma because you're not giving everybody a, a clear picture so they don't have enough to create and find and understand and research or whatever what the possible solutions are. So, um, and the media and these these folks know that that's what they do. But it's just important, very important to understand this because you'll start to realize that. And once you realize that there are more solutions to a problem, <clears throat> then um, you can start to open up your your mind and your thinking. And, and you'll start to do whatever it takes for you, whether it be reading, watching, listening, or thinking, thinking about yourself, whatever. You'll start to realize there are, if there's more solutions or more explanations to a problem or, or, or a debate or whatever it is, if you realize there are more explanations, then you start to look into them. You start to learn more. And, and you know, everybody wins. Now, sometimes that's kind of bittersweet because sometimes you learn, uh, some of the stuff that you learn is is um, sheds truth 
that you're not ready to accept, you know, <clears throat> or you weren't prepared for, you know, things can get uh, uh, kind of uh, disturbing sometimes when you realize what's going on. So there's that. And then also, especially lately, you've had a certain entertainer uh, or two. You had a certain entertainer in the news lately, uh, made certain comments and et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, the poisoning of the well and the guilty by association and the, the basic idea of the fallacy of composition kind of comes into play. And, and um, <clears throat> you know, usually the fallacy of composition is used when somebody is making a point about a scenario, not a person. But um, that's the way I know to talk about it at this point. And uh, I think if somebody smarter than me was to were to explain, you know, what guilty, I mean, what poisoning of the well means in relation to logical fallacy or in relation to a person, they might end up using the term fallacy of composition. <clears throat> because again, with fallacy of composition, you are saying that because a part of a thing has a certain attribute, certain characteristic, certain quality, et cetera, et cetera. Then therefore the whole thing has those attributes and they're usually negative. And um, therefore that whole thing is negative and should be avoided. So a certain person who has said or done certain things is rendered canceled or should no longer be listened to or can no longer say or be taken serious or be or say anything that anybody should should listen to. And this is very tragic because, especially in the black community, you know, we're always waiting. You're going to be sitting around waiting on a Messiah to come save you. A perfect, you're going to sit around and be waiting on a perfect person who has never made any mistakes, who, who never makes any mistakes <clears throat> before you'll listen to anybody. And, and when you get somebody who seems to be brilliant and smart, well, usually that comes at a cost and you have a certain amount of brain activity. This is scientifically proven as well. You have a certain amount of brain activity that makes you more prone to uh, go overboard when it comes to other things you're trying to say, do, or, or uh, get people to understand. Um, this is why a lot of times people say that usually a, a genius is not too far from crazy, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, or somebody who, and you quote unquote crazy, or somebody who, you know somebody, right, that's kind of off the wall, but they're relatively a genius. They're very smart when it comes to certain things. And this is scientifically, uh, there's a scientific explanation for that when it comes to uh, the neurons in your brain firing on, on more and all sides of your brain, quadrants or whatnot of your brain. Um, and it gives you a different, you know, an above average ability to, uh, you know, above average, shall we say, cognitive ability, but that also comes at a cost because uh, it's hard for you, uh, it's hard for a person sometimes to communicate that in such a finite world of certain words, only being able to be able, you know, only to be able to use certain words and concepts and ideas. So sometimes a person might say something that is off the wall or heaven forbid, uh, controversial or offensive because they're trying to, uh, to put so much information into a limited language or whatnot. Um, the disc profile, <laughs> thanks to real estate and sales classes, the disc profile and other things along those lines have helped um, me understand that. So, um, but anyway, you know, I just thought I'd do another little um, reminder and just kind of touch on, uh, on these topics because I don't care who you are I'm at the point where I don't care, and I've been I've been this way. I learned this firsthand when I was younger. You know, any person from any background can have something beneficial to say, and, and the one thing they can give you that you will never be able to get from any anyone else is their perspective and their understanding on something. And I always say that in 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 reverse a lot of times to people. It's like I can give you something nobody else can give you, and that's my perspective. And, you know, even when it comes to people that I usually talk smack about in the uh, in politics, et cetera, et cetera, 
at the end of the day, I know, you know, when I'm when it's time to stop talking smack and really be serious, I know that any of these people could present a point that is valid and should be taken into consideration, even, you know, a certain president of a certain country. So, um, but anyway, just thought I'd do another little touch on some of these logical fallacies. And I think they are very important. I think if more and more people started looking into logical fallacy, you'd learn more about yourself. You'd, you'd have a, you'd literally have a better, more exciting life. If you, if you don't already, um, you know, if, if, if you're depressed or, you know, you don't really like the way the world is right now, well, try to do something about it. And logical fallacy and, and these false narratives and cognitive biases that the machine and the media are helping people develop is the reason why the world is as negative and as bad as it is. I mean, it could be worse. But um, as it gets worse, I guarantee you logical fallacy is the reason why. And understanding this and basically helping fight this um, would only help you, your loved ones, the world, civilization as a whole. So anyway, love, peace, uh, light. See y'all later. And uh, take care. Peace.